To say that a lot is riding on where you were randomly born seems like a wild understatement. In this country, it determines if you're team soda or team pop, what in-state university you have access to, and unfortunately, what you are taught about sex. Yes, in the year of our Lord, 2023, there are no federal laws that lay out what or how sex ed should be taught. It is entirely up to the states, which is extremely unsexy. You know what else is unsexy? That in the U.S., you're more likely to receive sex ed that promotes abstinence than is medically accurate, or that only 18 states require information about birth control be shared, or that groups like Moms for Liberty are even now coming after the teaching of consent, which, you guessed it, is something that I do not consent to. In fact, I have some serious choice words for it. Look, sex ed in school is always going to be awkward. No one wants to hear about gonorrhea from the gym teacher. Just because you know the rules of dodgeball and were born wearing an Adidas tracksuit and a whistle does not mean that you are qualified to tell me how my period is going to work for the next 40 years. But people can get over awkwardness, even a gym full of tweens. What we can't get over is the truly horrendous sexual health foundation that our youth is growing up with. Because when young people grow up without learning about their bodies, they turn into adults who don't know anything about their bodies. And then some of those adults get to make laws about the rest of our bodies, and that is dangerous. This is Choice Words. I'm Samantha B. My guest today ooh, is the supremely talented Carrie Washington. Before she was the uber-famous actress you know her as, she traveled with a youth theater company teaching about safe sex. I tried to convince her to take it back on the road and teach America's youth about condoms, but alas, I do not think it worked. But if you want to hear me talk about it, go to SamanthaB.com for tickets to my live show, Your Favorite Woman, The Joy of Sex Ed. In the meantime, take a listen and make good choices. And a great choice to make would be to stick around for the full episode because at the end, you'll be able to hear an exclusive clip from Carrie's new memoir, Thicker Than Water, which is the October pick for the audiobook club from Apple Books and Lemonada Media. This book is so moving, intimate, and brave, and I am thrilled to be able to talk with Carrie. Hey. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for talking to me. This is a great pleasure. I'm such a fan. So this that's such a treat to hear from you. You're such an extraordinary oh. writer and storyteller. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so are you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and uh, oh gosh. Okay. We have so much to talk about. I really, really want to talk deeply about the book. And so oh, if you. if people haven't, if people who are listening to this haven't read it, they t- should immediately. It would be a very mm. good preface. Of course, you know, this podcast is called Choice Words and you use the word choice so much in the book. Yes. It's a really central theme. It is. It really is. It really is. Is there something, because this podcast is about choices that we make that change the trajectory of our lives. And there's so much of that in the book. Is there something that you can land on that emerges for you as one of the biggest choices that you've made that did change everything for you? Yeah, it's funny because I I think in some ways it's the choice to write the book for me. Right. Because I think, you know, a mm-hmm. lot of the book is about a choice that my parents made and mm-hmm. choices that my parents made about how I was conceived and then not telling me how I was conceived. Um, and my choice has been how to be in relationship with that truth and to right. live it differently than they have. Right. It is such an interesting question because you're so... um private in your life. Mm. Your personal life is 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 kept very close. It's yeah. important for you. You I, keep your children out of it. You know, it's very, you even th- basically through a secret wedding. And, 
<laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and you moved when you had renovated a whole house and then realized yes. people could see into your backyard. Like, I think it's, you know, so making the choice to put it all out there, to put what was extremely private out in public, that can't have been an easy decision for you. How did you come to that decision? So part of it was because even though I've been really private about most of my life and extremely private about my marriage and extremely private about my kids, I mean, to the point where now they're like, are you ashamed of us? Like, why can't we be on your social media? (laughs) Um, And in all of that time, I've been very public about my parents. My parents have always walked red carpets with me. My parents have been in lots of magazines, lots of photo shoots, lots of red carpets, um, award shows. So in a way, like not telling this truth about my family Mm -hmm. felt like there was no way for me to do that without being complicit in this false narrative that they had built. So it was kind of against my will. I just, I felt like I want to be able to tell the truth about who I am. I I don't want to suddenly stop being in the public with my parents. Mm -hmm. Nobody would like it if I stopped doing dad jokes on Instagram, (laughs) but I want to be able to tell the truth about who we are and the dynamics of our family. Right. And it is very, um, it's very affirming of your parents too. Like there's a long, yeah. long, you know, the 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 book winds down many paths and it is the story of your life and it is the story of your relationship with your parents. But once the central truth is revealed or like yeah. the secret, um, there's, okay, so is it, Okay, if we talk about the huge reveal, yes, in your book. So <laughs> you you found out relatively recently, yeah, five years ago, five years ago, that your dad was not your biological father, because your parents mm-hmm. had to use a sperm donor to conceive. Conception mm-hmm. was difficult for them. Um, so that was a revelation, obviously, that rocked your Crazy. world crazy, turned everything upside down. I mean, I talk about it in the book that I, there was a part of me that knew in my household that something was up, like something was up. I didn't know what it was. I always felt like there was this emotional distance between my parents and I, like there was something going on, Mm -hmm. but I would never have guessed that. Not in a million years. Did you, did they, I feel like so in so many families, there are like glances knowing looks. Were you, Mm -hmm. did you, was that a part of your life contextually? Yeah, totally. Like there were, I think I talk about in the book, I do talk about the book, this moment of being on the elevator with my parents and them talking about a lawyer and me saying like, who's that? And like silence on the elevator, not even like, don't ask things you should know, or we'll tell you when you're older, just like silence. Like, like I hadn't spoken. <laughs> right. And there there were moments like that. There were flashes of this kind of like, right. oh, we are a family of secrets. I knew that we were a family of secrets, but I never knew what the secret was. And I knew that in our home, we didn't tell the full truth. Right. Um, and that became just kind of the culture of our home for me. In a way, wasn't it such a relief to know that there was, that you were right the whole time <laughs> just yeah. to be able to... You're like, I knew. Yeah. I didn't know, no, but I knew something. Truly. It it was, um, I don't know. It felt like the first time in my life that I had a shot to really know myself. Mm-hmm. Like I had been searching for myself my right. whole life, searching for myself in these characters and in relationships and in work and just looking for a more complete sense of comfort with who I am. And when I got this news, I was like, oh, this is the missing piece. And it wasn't even like they were going to replace the missing piece with fact. Because when I said, well, like, who is this guy? Who, who mm-hmm. Where'd you get the sperm? They were like, we have no idea. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't um, a completion of the missing piece. Like, right. I didn't become complete. But the acknowledgement that there was a mystery and the acknowledgement that there was this deeper truth that I had an itch for, but hadn't been able to define was Mm -hmm. so encouraging. And it felt like a real 
invitation into me knowing myself better. It's huge. So it's not only relief, obviously. It adds so many more questions to your life. But did your parents' countenance change at all? Did they... Was there something that is kind of ephemeral that let go in them when the secret was out? I think so. It was a process. It wasn't immediate. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my mother, so they dealt with this information in very different ways. You know, my mom, I think in many ways, held on to a secret for four decades. She I mean, the, the one of the lessons of the book is if you have a secret to keep, you tell Valerie Washington because she <laughs> didn't tell her sisters, didn't tell her best friends, wow. didn't tell anybody, like really didn't tell a therapist. I mean, she really, really held on to this on her own for four decades, right. over four decades. So there has been this beautiful, I've been able to witness this beautiful freedom for her mm-hmm. um, also in recovering from this latest bout of cancer like this she has this new lease on life that right. is just so brilliant to witness and inspiring and i think for my dad it was a very different process because he wasn't keeping a secret he like you know back then and even now for a lot of people when you do artificial insemination they say go home and have sex cuz it helps with the process of getting pregnant and also back then they didn't know there'd be an ancestry or a 23 in me so right. they were like go home and have sex and then you have plausible deniability and you never have to deal with the fact that this may not be your biological child and so my dad took that plausible deniability and turned it into absolute fact right and I was his and he was mine and there was nothing else to talk about. And that was kind of his denial became so real for him for four decades that when the possibility that it might be scientifically proven that we weren't biologically related, that actually became his crisis point. Like he was um, not prepared and at first really unwilling to walk that path of truth with me. Right. So they had very different relationships to the revelation. I think in many ways it was like a weight off my mother's shoulder. And in many ways it was the beginning of a, a real inward, courageous process on the part of my dad. Right. Want to listen to the rest of this episode? Head over to your favorite podcast player to hear the entire show. I highly recommend it. 